Good morning. Welcome to worship for our third Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Just a couple quick announcements. There are still lilies. I know they're not up here, but they are out in the back entranceway. So please, if you have not yet claimed your lily, do so. Um, I know the bulbs will survive, but the prettiness of the plants might die faster if you don't take them. Um, other announcements can be found in the back of your bulletins. Um, and we are having an additional council meeting on Tuesday, April 23rd. That is just for your information. Um, so I thank council members who have been able to commit to that additional meeting. Are there other announcements for us today? Hearing none, I invite you to stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in singing this joyful Easter tide.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself 
has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading today's psalm responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Then they are saying, Who will show us any good? That the light of your face shine upon us, the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In the peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, the Lord, make me rest Our second reading is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our parent and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Guess what? Jesus is not a ghost. Really, I know this is a little shocking for us, except for us sitting here. Maybe it's not actually shocking. We've known and been taught that Jesus truly rose again, was living again, and indeed was not a ghost. But could you imagine if we didn't have this knowledge and this belief that we do today? And then take a moment to imagine Jesus showing up after you watched him die. Die a public death on the cross. And now before you stands, Jesus. I'm fairly certain that the idea of Jesus as a ghost would seem more likely and logical than Jesus being risen from the dead. And while we do have faith and belief that Jesus truly appears to the disciples after his resurrection, we only have this because of stories like the one we hear today. Jesus is not a ghost. And this means so much, but most obviously, it means he's really alive. That's redundant on purpose. Jesus is flesh and bone and blood, and before us he stands. Jesus is not a ghost, and fear is completely expected and understood. Jesus is not a ghost, and with him he brings peace. He brings shalom not just Miss America's world peace, but actual peace. Peace that is comfort and salvation. Peace that provides hope and joy, life and love, and so much more. In his commentary on working preacher, Michael Joseph Brown writes that the disciples believed that Jesus' rejection and crucifixion made him incapable of serving as Israel's redeemer. However, this passage demonstrates that Jesus continues communication or the transmitting of salvation to those gathered after his death. There are conflicting feelings and responses some might feel that sense of peace and shalom, while others may feel trepidation or even panic, the urge to flee. We too might feel some of these conflicting responses ourselves, yet we trust and believe and hold firm that Jesus is not a ghost. To this day, he is not a ghost. We believe in the salvation gifted to the world, to us, through Jesus' death and resurrection. We have faith that Christ has ascended and will indeed come again. Jesus is not a ghost, and his presence, while perhaps impossible to fully explain, is real. Jesus continues to show up, not as a ghost, but through the love of others, the love that we share, the love that we too experience. Our challenge as disciples, as followers of Jesus, is to show up, to be present, to be a presence as Jesus is made known. Guess what? We are not ghosts either. I know, I know. I could pick up my water and take a drink and it wouldn't just flow through me or any other weirdness of ghosties that 
I don't even know how to explain or if they do exist. But we're not ghosts, I know that. It seems obvious that we aren't ghosts, right? We can see one another, talk to one another. I could come give you a high five or a handshake or even a hug of peace. So truly, not ghosts and not aberrations. But the question is, do we live in ways that display that our faith is real? Do we live in ways that display that our faith is not ghostly? Now, bear with me for a moment. The way we live each and every day, the choices we make, the way we interact with one another, all the things we do, our very lives, do they show our faith in Christ, in Jesus? Do the way we live our lives demonstrate our faith that Jesus is the Redeemer, the Savior of the world? Do we share that love of God in visible and experienced ways? Or do we hide our faith? Is it hard to see through our actions and choices the way we live that we believe in God and in God's love for all? Is our faith ghostly or even ethereal? Jesus is not a ghost. We are not ghosts either. And our faith ought not be ghostly. People should see our faith, experience our faith. We too should feel our faith and live it. It is our responsibility in appreciation and thanks of all that God has done, continues to do, and will do for our entire lives to live those lives in faithfulness, to live in ways that others can also experience God's love. God tells he is real, real. A promise made for the world, for all of us. So while we may not be able to explain the hows of Jesus' physical presence, we trust and believe in God, in Jesus' life and his resurrection, and God's continued presence in our lives. And so, we live. We don't float through life as ghosts who cannot interact with the world. We live. We don't ignore the needs of others, pretending their needs don't exist. We live. We don't look through the reality of our neighbor, claiming to not understand their experience, but we live. We live to God in a way that expresses that Jesus is risen and alive and made real for us. We live to God in a way that expresses that God's love is real and present, that God's love is for all the world. We live to God in such a way that allows others to come to know God's love for them so they too can trust and believe in God's love for all the world, including all of us everyone throughout this world. We live to God in a way that shows that, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done.
Let us now confess the faith we share thanks to the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines, and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, particularly those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the solitude of our hearts. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place. Your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died, especially Luanna Howard, Robert Klein, Phyllis Bressler, and Robert Wentz Sr. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to sign, to show a sign of peace with one another. The congregation may be seated, and I invite the choir forward to share their anthem as offering is collected.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering there, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. For those of you who have difficulty with steps, if you raise your hand, we will gladly bring communion to you.
I invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. 